Okay, continuing on now in this report to see if we can figure out what might influence or predict the consumption of ice cream in the 50s. I've already determined, based upon looking at the correlations, that I don't have any multicollinearity. That's a good thing. And I've also determined that all of these variables probably need to be considered. Uh, those variables indeed were not all zero correlated or near zero correlated with every other variable. Every one of those variables have at least a weak correlation with some of the other variables in the data set. I'm going to go ahead and start with a full model. I'm going to put in income, price, and temperature and see how much of the variation in consumption can be explained by all three of those. So let me go ahead and do that now in my report. Okay, that's the full model, and then I'm going to want to actually get a summary of that model. And let's take a look. Uh, let's see. Oh, I called, the, I called it model, not full model. There we go. Okay, so I've got a little bit of... Good news, actually mostly good news, and a little bit of not as good news. So the good news is that I have explained 72% of the variation in consumption through these variables, income, temperature, price. I've con I have explained 72% of the variation. Uh, another piece of good news is that we can say that this model is in fact a model that should fit even outside of this particular data set. That's good. The only concern I have at this point is that um, price here uh, is not as stable of a predictor as I would like. I have a p-value of 0.22. That's not the end of the world, but um, I would like to know that, in fact, if I were to go to the population of data or even another sample drawn from the data set, that I'm going to get similar results even with price than I have here. But the standard error on price is, is pretty high. Now, remember what we're looking at is price after already accounting for income and temperature, just like we're looking at income after accounting for price and temperature and temperature after accounting for price and income. So I may want to explore some more models, uh, maybe look at models in which, for instance, price is not in there. Why don't we check and see what the semi-partial squared would be for price after controlling for these other two variables of income and price. So I'm going to go ahead and do another model. I'm going to call this the, um, let's call it, I'm going to start by copying this full model so I don't have to retype everything. Let's call this the um, income temp model. So income temp model, we're going to just eliminate price. And from this, we'll actually be able to see what the semi-partial is, um, semi-partial squared is for price. So, okay. So notice the semi-partial squared is tiny. That is, we are we have dropped down from 0.72 to 0.70 or 
two percentage points in the variation of consumption that we've lost by reducing price. So the semi-partial, the semi-partial squared is 0.02. So just for grins, let's also take a look at the partial because that actually can provide us some additional information. Remember, the partial is going to tell us how much of the um, variation that remains after accounting for temperature and income is explained by price. Because what we've just looked at is how much of the total variation is explained by price. So let's go ahead and set up for this. So I'm going to need to remove income and temperature out of price. So let's just call this, um, we'll call it partial one and partial two. So partial one, I'm going to remove income and temperature from price. And then for partial two, I'm going to remove those same two things, but from my response variable, which is consumption. Okay. And then I'm going to look at the correlation squared of the residuals from these models. All right, let's try all this. And so down here, we see that we've um, created these partial models and there's our answer. Our answer is that even of the amount remaining, that is even after we look at just the 30% um, of variation that is not explained, we're only going to explain about 6%. We're going to explain about 6% of the remaining 30% or about 2% of the total. So I've pretty much convinced myself that price is not going to do well with income and temperature. I also know that price up here is not going to be great even by itself. Um, so we have... Uh, minus 0.259 or about a minus 0.26. And if I were to go ahead and um, square minus 0.26, I would account for about six, uh, seven percent of the the um, variation. So 0.26 squared is about seven percent of the very 0.07, 7% of the variation if price was by itself. Now that doesn't mean that if I were to remove only income or only temperature that I wouldn't find price doing a lot better. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to leave temperature in there. No matter what model I end up with, I'm going to leave temperature in there. And you might ask, why are you going to do that? I have such a strong correlation. Um, I know that zero order correlations can, different things can happen in the presence of other variables when we do the multiple regression. But not only do I have such a strong correlation, I have a theoretical belief that ice cream consumption is very much related to temperature. And so I'm going to go ahead and leave temperature in. I tend not to eat a lot of ice cream in cold winter months. I'm not saying I don't eat any, but a little bit more in uh, hot months. And that doesn't mean that we use me to create the theoretical model. But my belief is that uh, many others are like me as well in that regard. So let's do a couple more models that have temperature in it. Uh, just to see if we can put the, the, the final 
piece of the puzzle together regarding eliminating price. Let me do one that is um, a price temp model. Um, let's see. Well, let me go ahead and just copy. And I'm going to replace income with price. And let's look at the summary. Okay. And that model dropped down to uh, 0.63. So with just income and temperature, it's 0 0.70. But with income and price, it's 0.63. Three. I'm sorry, with temperature and price, it's 0.63. Now, again, considering theoretically, I don't know, I might have considered temperature and price to be the most important theoretically. Uh, but in terms of overlapping variation among these explanatory variables, it, it drops the amount of variation I'm accounting for quite a bit compared to what I could do with income and temperature. So it seems to be, be me like after accounting for temperature, income is really our best bet. Let, let's see what happens if um, we want to get just the partial squared, the semi-partial squared rather, for just income. Well, I know what it's going to be with just temperature. It's going to be the square of that 0.77. So let's put that in. Actually, it's about 0.78. So if I square 0.78, I've accounted for about 61% of the variance with just temperature. About 61% of the variation with just temperature, which uh, that we were actually adding price, added very little to that, about another percent or two that it added, percentage point or two. Um, so, um, you're, you're hearing me think aloud here a little bit, so sorry if it sounds like I'm stumbling and fumbling, I'm thinking aloud. Um, I think I'm going to eliminate price from consideration, but I also know that if I add income on top of temperature, that I've added about... Um, uh, about 10 percentage points more of the variation that I explain. So I believe I'm honing in on a model here. And that model that I'm going to arrive at is the income temperature model. So let me go ahead and settle on that model. And let me go ahead and formally uh, calculate partials and semi-partials for price as a justification, one justification of why I'm eliminating price from consideration. So um, let me say a few things about all of this and put some narrative before it gets too confusing here. All right, so here's what I'm going to say. Um, a multiple regression model to predict the amount of ice cream consumption from the other three variables results in a coefficient of determination of 0.72. Uh, I need to support that. So let me go ahead and put some things up above it, even though I'm going to hide them. I, I need to have support underlying within my notebook. So that came from this. Okay. So just double checking that it is, there it is, the 0.72. I'm going to go ahead and hide this now. Nope, I'm not even going to show output. I'm going to show nothing. I'm just going to run the code. Okay, so there's my 0.72 came from this. So that's my support for that first statement. 